Hi and welcome to the final part of a series of videos on file handling in C-sharp. This video will focus on the File System Watcher class. This tutorial is the final part of this C-sharp for beginners course. The next course produced by this channel will focus on the more advanced aspects of the C-sharp language. So please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you can be notified of future content. So what is the purpose of the File System Watcher class? Basically, the File System Watcher class listens to the File System change notifications and raises events when a directory or a file in a directory changes. The developer can, for example, write custom code in a method wired up to an event made available in the File System Watcher class. The developer is able to create a component that watches files on a local computer, a network drive, or a remote computer. So let's get straight into an example that makes use of the File System Watcher class. In this example, we are going to create code that monitors a directory. When a text file is moved into the monitored directory, the File System Watcher component will raise an event. We'll wire up a method to the File System Watcher class's create event, so that when a text file is created within the monitored or watched directory, our code within the wired up method is fired. Our code will create two HTML files in an output directory every time the relevant event is raised, which will happen when the monitored folder changes. In this case, when a text file is, for example, moved into it. One of the HTML files will present each of the relevant text file's content in plain paragraphs. The file name of the text file will be presented as a heading in the HTML file, and the content of the text file will be presented in the HTML file as a paragraph. The other HTML file that will be created will represent the same content, but contained within an accordion style layout. Please see the second part of this video series on file handling, where the jQuery accordion widget was used for the same purpose. Let's create a new .NET Core console application, and let's name this project and solution File System Watcher Example. Let's create two private static read-only variables at the top of our class. The first variable will store the path of the monitored input directory. The second variable will store the path of the output directory where our two HTML files will be created. Let's create a method named initialize application, and let's create a method named ensure directory exists. We first want to ensure the monitored input directory exists and the output directory where our HTML output files will be created exists. So the ensure directory exists method accepts one argument that contains the relevant directory's path. If the relevant directory does not exist, this method will create the directory. So let's call this method twice within our initialize application method. Once to ensure that the input directory exists and once to ensure that the output directory exists. Let's write code to call the initialize application method from our main method. Okay, so now let's write a method where we'll configure the file system watcher component. Let's name this method run folder watcher. It accepts one string argument, which will contain the path of the directory we wish to monitor. Let's wrap the instantiation of the file system watcher class in a using statement. The using statement ensures that the dispose method is called even if an exception occurs within the using block. You can achieve the same result by putting the object inside a try block and then calling dispose in a finally block. In fact, this is how the using statement is translated by the compiler. For more information on the iDisposable interface and the dispose method, please navigate to the following URL. So let's write code to configure the file system watcher component. Let's set the path property to the directory we want the file system watcher component to monitor. 
We must then set the notification filter property. The file system watcher component is set to watch for changes in last write and last access time, the creation, deletion, or renaming of text files in the directory. The bitwise OR operator is used to add the relevant values together before the total value is assigned to the notify filter property. Let's then set the filter property to star.txt so that files with other extensions are ignored. This application is only interested in text files that appear within the monitor directory, the input directory. Now we can wire up a method that will contain our custom code to the create event of the file system watcher component. And we can use Visual Studio to generate this method with the correct method signature. Let's do this by hovering our mouse pointers over the red squiggly line, then clicking show potential fixes, then generate method program dot on changed. We have essentially wired up our on changed method to the create event provided in the file system watcher class. So for example, if we move or copy a text file into the monitor directory, our onChanged method will fire. The onChanged method is where we can apply our custom code, i.e. code that will run when a text file appears in the monitor directory. Let's then set the file system watcher components enable raising events property to true. Let's write code to allow the user to quit the application by entering the Q key. So let's write code to move the file that has appeared within the monitor directory into our output directory within the onChanged method. Let's then call the run file system watcher method from our main method. So let's create a method named update HTML file with text content. This method contains three parameters. The first parameter is a string that will store the HTML file name. The second parameter is a string that will store the web page heading. And I want the third parameter to be an enum that will contain a value that will instruct our code on which layout to apply when generating the HTML output. As discussed in the beginning of this video, there will be two possible layouts in this example. One representing content in a plain paragraph style layout and the other representing content within a jQuery accordion style layout. So let's create an enum named page layout with two items, namely accordion and paragraph. Let's then include a parameter of type page layout with an now update HTML file with text content methods method signature. So let's write the code for our update HTML with text content. Let's create a string named content. Let's create an object of type directory info and pass the underscore watcher path output string variable as an argument to the directory info classes constructor. The underscore watcher path output variable contains the location of where our code will move our text files to and where the HTML output files will be created. Then let's create a variable named files to store references to all the text files that have been pushed by our code from the monitored input directory into the output directory. The array named files will point to an array defined as the file info type. Notice that we are passing star.txt as an argument to the getFiles method. We are only interested in processing text files. Let's instantiate an object of type streamwriter within a using statement. I'm going to include a marker here in the form of a to-do comment that we'll replace in a bit with a call to a method responsible for creating the top part of our HTML file. Then within a for each loop, we want to open each of the text files within our output directory and read their content into our content variable. 
and we'll build the body of our HTML file within the for each loop. So let's include a to-do comment that we'll replace in a bit with a method that will build the body of the relevant HTML output file. And then outside the for each loop, we'll create a to-do comment that we'll replace in a bit with a call to a method that will write the bottom part of the relevant HTML output file. So now I'm going to navigate in my browser on my Mac to the GitHub repository that stores the code we created in the second part of this video series on file handling. So I'm going to copy three methods, namely add top HTML, build HTML body, and add bottom HTML to the clipboard. I'm going to go back to my Windows platform through the use of remote desktop and paste these three methods into our code editor. I'm going to tweak the add top HTML method so that this method can be reused for creating different layouts. Right, so let's replace the to-do comments we created in our update HTML file with text content method with the relevant method calls. Let's create a method named update HTML output files. And within this method, Let's make two calls to the update HTML file with text content method. The first call will generate an HTML file encapsulating the content from the text files contained within the output directory in an accordion style layout. This layout is denoted by the page layout.accordion enum item. The second HTML file will contain the same content, but this content will be displayed as plain paragraphs. This layout is denoted by the page layout.paragraph enum item. Then we can include a call to the update HTML output files method within the onChange method. Remember that the onChange method is fired every time a new text file appears within the folder monitored by the file system watcher component. So I've chosen sharks as the theme of our content. So let's get some blurb about sharks from the internet. Tiger shark. The great white shark. The bull shark. The leopard shark. The hammerhead shark. All right, so let's run the code. Let's move the text file named bull shark into the input directory. And if we look in the input directory, the text file is not there. Our code has moved it to the output directory. And let's see if our two HTML files have been generated. Great, we have the accordion layout. And let's copy some of the other text files into our monitored input directory. Let's look at our accordion layout again. Excellent. And let's look at the paragraph layout. Great. Now for good measure, let's add one more text file. Let's name it cowshark. Now let's put in a breakpoint in our onChange method before we copy the text file to the monitored input directory. Let's run the code. Let's move our cowshark text file into the input directory. And you can see as soon as we do this, our breakpoint is hit. 
Let's step through the code that moves the text file we have just moved into our input directory into the output directory. So you can see at this stage the input directory is empty. Let's see if it has appeared within the output directory. And it has. Great. You can see that the content on CowSharks has not yet been included in our HTML file at this stage. So let's now run the code that generates the HTML file. And let's see if the content on CowSharks has now been included in our HTML files. And there it is, CowSharks. Excellent. If you want to learn more about the File System Watcher class, please navigate to the Microsoft webpage at this location. We looked at how using the standard libraries can ensure that code can be written once and run on multiple .NET runtimes, for example versions of the .NET Framework, .NET Core and Mono.NET runtimes. We created code that could traverse a directory and read content from multiple text files using the Stream Reader class and code that could create text files and append content to text files using the c -sharp Stream Writer class. We implemented code using the file stream, binary reader and binary writer classes for reading from a binary file and writing to a binary file, as well as randomly accessing data within a binary file. We also implemented code to update records stored within a binary file. We wrote code to cache data in memory by using the memory stream class to store data as a byte array. We wrote code to update data within a memory stream and read data from a memory stream. In our final video, we implemented the File System Watcher class to implement code that monitored a specified directory for changes. We then implemented custom code that fired when a relevant change to the monitored directory occurred. I hope you have enjoyed this video series on c -sharp file handling. And for those of you who have gone through the entire c -sharp for Beginners course, well done for making it all the way to the end. In the next course, we'll explore the more advanced aspects of the C-sharp language. So if you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you can be notified of future content. Please feel free to share these videos with anyone you feel may benefit from their content. If you feel you have benefited from this video, please consider hitting the like button. It will be greatly appreciated. As always, the code created in this video can be downloaded from GitHub. A link to the appropriate GitHub repository has been included in the description. Thank you and take care. Thank <laughs> you.